So first of all, who are we? You guys, I think you all know we're a company called Retire in Panama. That's who we are. We help people do that. Not just retire, we help people move here. We people, doesn't matter if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, or 80s. Um, we have helped all those ages actually successfully come to Panama without problems and stuff like that. Tonight, there's nothing here to sell you, um, except if you want to dial that 1-800 number, scrolling on the bottom of your screen, feel free. No, just kidding. Uh, there, there's nothing to sell you. All the information we're gonna, giving you here today is free. There's nothing to buy. And Oscar and I are going to, uh, and Megan are going to introduce ourselves. And after that, you might realize, hey, if these guys actually do have the experience that they need to, to be doing what, what we do, we have over 20 years experience, the three of us together, helping people move to Panama. So Oscar and Megan, do you want to say hi and tell them who you are? Sure. So I'm Megan. I am originally from the Philadelphia area, Pennsylvania. Um, I went to Penn State University, graduated in international development, and then went into the Peace Corps. Actually, got yeah, my Peace Corps mug. We're both hey. representing tonight. Oscar's <laughs> got his Columbia mug. I have my Peace Corps mug. So I came into the Peace Corps here in Panama, served for two years doing environmental work, English work, all different kinds of projects. <clears throat> and I learned a lot about Panama, the culture, the people, learned to speak Spanish, and obviously met Oscar during my time here, and um, then came on board with the Retired Panama team. So I handle a lot of the logistics, I keep the tour running smoothly, and I'm also on tour. So I love to share everything that I learned about Panama in the Peace Corps with all of our tour guests too. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hello everybody, and for those that don't know us, welcome for the first time. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, my name is Oscar Peña, and I'm originally from Colombia, Cali, to be more precise. I left Colombia back in March 2006, and I went first to Costa Rica. I was studying hotel and tourism management back in Colombia. And I went to Costa Rica to gain more experience and also to learn a second language, uh, which is English. And uh, that wasn't easy, but I get it. I got it quite a bit, a little bit. Anyway, uh, I stayed there for three years and a half, getting a lot more experience in tourism. Uh, I work in an industry for that time period, and I got to get a lot of experience working in a um, small luxury hotel, so a lot of customize and focus in hospital service. Um, so I that's something that I really enjoy and I got a lot of experience from there. Moved to uh, Panama. I don't know why I'm a little bit nervous tonight. Anyway. the whole family on. I guess, I guess, I guess. Oh, okay, okay. I got to perform. Okay, no. But I, I, got, I got to Panama in 2009. And uh, I started uh, working in the hotel industry here in, uh, in Valle Escondido. As a matter of fact, that was my first job. Then I found out uh, a need in Boquete. You know, I saw that there is a huge expat community. I saw also an opportunity when the people were struggling to get down a few things that I, that I saw I could be helpful and I was helping. And so I was, you know, maybe I should start offering some expert services. So <laughs> my first job, my first company started with the name Mucho Gusto Panama. This, this company was created to help SBACs to move around, to just get things done, and also private custom, customized uh, services or tours. And I started doing uh, private tours in Panama, and that's transition was to uh, uh, get to meet Rod. And Rod was, a matter of fact, one of my first clients. And, and Rod and I would just start working and I, I helped him uh, to get, because he was lost a little bit. So I helped him to get his stuff done, get his residency, get everything. So we started growing business. Then years passed by and we built Start working about okay, let's let's do some or next job. What's gonna be? Well, let's do a retirement Panama. Uh, so we start working on that, and this is what we got today. During the process, 
I was lucky to meet my angel uh, next to me to by my side. So I was just extremely lucky to have her on board and she has nothing but being a, a extremely huge asset for a company. And so in doing the operations every time in Panama, I am a little bit of jack of all trades. So I'm gonna be your driver, your guide, your bodyguard, your bartender, your waiter, um, your counselor, whatever you guys need down here, I am there for you. So sorry for a little extended version of this story. Yeah, Rod, I think he took up all the time. Yeah, sorry. We're gonna have to skip to Sam now. What, is he done now? I wasn't listening. I was looking at, uh, at all the people here. I was <laughs> seeing if I knew anybody. <laughs> sorry, Oscar, just kidding. You know, I think our entire- really good things about you. I think half our August group is all, oh, hey, Becky and Lawrence, and I see Daniel and Bruce in there somewhere. All right. So anyhow, my name is Rod. I'm from Vancouver, Canada originally. I moved here in 2011, so I'm approaching my 10th year. And Oscar was absolutely right. I met Oscar about three months after because I was in kind of trouble. I tried to do the whole thing on my own. One way ticket, fly to Panama. Hey, I'm going to live here for the rest of my life. Wasn't working out. By the time I met Oscar in 2012, he was already an expert in helping um, expats relocate to Panama. And it was one of the biggest blessings. I, I would have ended up back in Canada. I know it. But after meeting and, and me hiring him um, and using all his services, I wanted a better price. So I said I would be his friend. And uh, no, no, I started helping him. We started trading services. I'm an online marketer. He had a business. So I would do work for him and he would help me do this. And it just was the start of a partnership. And that developed into a um, purchasing a company in, in, in the town of Boquete where we did local tourism alongside of uh, our expat um, endeavors. And then in 2017, we were going to start a little earlier, but we waited until about 2017 to put the group thing together. But we kept it like we always did with our private tours, small, informal, uh, a week full of fun and, and tons of information. And that's, um, you know, that's how we like doing our business. But our business is more than just uh, selling people on tours. As I said, we're not going to sell you on anything because we're sold out for almost a year anyways. But it's helping expats in, a, in any way. And if it's just a matter of answering an email or picking up a phone call and helping an expert, uh, an expat, with, so they don't get into trouble, we do it all the time. I wish I had some of that help back in 2011, then I wouldn't have needed Oscar. And we, <laughs> so, But um, that's basically my short story. I have a background in um, business and um, online uh, marketing and advertising and stuff like that. So that's what I do for the company. Oscar and Megan run the tour portion, although I am on the tour for the last three days with, with the group. And it's a, it's a great partnership. And we feel like we're doing some great stuff. Our past guests like it. Our future guests, hopefully you still come after, after watching us on this call. Okay. Anyhow, we're doing this call. We're doing something a little different. I'm going to introduce somebody. Um, I want to focus a little bit because we get this all the time. Rentals. How do I find a rental? And how, how don't you find a rental like I did in 2011? Look on Craigslist. Send a total stranger $400 by Western Union <laughs> to your town and expect the rental to actually be what you were looking for. You have to tell them about your rental. <clears throat> Well, the, uh, yeah, it was home of all the cockroaches in Panama. My, my house. I didn't live anywhere else because I've been here. Oh, years, right. uh, and I, I have, I have <laughs> any problem. So yeah. it, it just wasn't. So I lost money there. I had to move out earlier than I thought. Never pay multiple months up front for a rental. There's no need to until you, you know, you like the place. But we're going to get into a lot of that. I, I have some questions lined up. I'm going to introduce the guy, Samantha from Inside Panama. They're, they have a rentals agency here in Cherokee. Um, Samantha heads up the Cherokee one. We'll talk about the Panama City Beaches Coronado later. So Sam, thank you for joining us tonight. You can see on the screen, she's right beside me. Say hi, Sam. And give me Hello. a little introduction about yourself, how you ended up in, this, in Panama and this business. 
So, um, as you know, my name's Samantha. I'm just waving at my current clients and old clients, so Rob and Pippa, not by age, and Jim, and I see you and your wife too. <laughs> um, so, basically, I am from South Africa. I immigrated to Panama almost three years ago with my daughter, who's 16, and my husband. Um, we originally started off with my husband opening his own company, and um, I came from a corporate environment. I was an executive PA to the CEO and the financial director, as well as the owner of a international logistics company. And when I landed in Panama and it was a fun holiday for a month and then I wanted to pull my hair out there after, I missed working, I missed the challenges of the job. And Mike was kind enough to offer me the opportunity to do the rentals. And <laughs> I drove in head first and I'm loving it. I love the challenges, I love the people I meet. A lot of become friends, um, such interesting um, people from the tour. Thanks, Oscar and Megan and Rod also, because I get a lot of my lovely clients from you. Two of them I can see at the moment. <laughs> and yes, that's basically me. Oh, right on. So, um, Samantha, what do you do for the client and how much does it cost them? So it costs nothing for clients. Um, my payment comes from the owners because we charge the owners a um, fee. So you basically get my services for free. And there's a lot that, you know, a lot of people ask me the question, and I suppose it's rightfully so, um, do I up the prices? Um, they've heard that if you go through an agent, the prices increase. And it's impossible because if you sign in the rental agreement with the owner, I can't change the price. Um, so that's where we differ. We don't yeah, go yeah, through yeah. anyone yes. else, but through our um, owners and signing off on the rental agreements. Um, we know the area. So you paying us to recommend you an area. Um, so if you're looking for something in a warm area, I'm certainly not going to take you up in the mountains. That saves time. Um, I look at the trusted and reliable clients that we have. Um, we don't just pick a house and just rent it to you for the sake of renting it. We save you time and I really take this into consideration. I listen to your um, needs. Yeah, and, just, um, I mean, you know, when I, when I, I turned it off and turned um, Samantha, if you can unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically it saves you time because you're paying, you're not paying for my services, but you're benefiting from it because you ultimately get in the rental you need that meets all your requirements. I take the time to listen to you. A lot of my clients, for instance, um, they would give me their contact details, whether it's a month or two months or three months ahead, even a year. I have some clients from on a next year, October coming in, and I let them know a month before they arrive. Um, what we have available, and then we start chatting, and that's um, yeah, basically it. Great. So, since you you work for a company, you actually have an agreement with the owner of the property, so you know that he actually owns the property. So that no one's going to get scanned by one of those Craigslist things that are out there and stuff like that. Yeah, that's uh, a great thing to look for, guys. When you're looking at the actual property, what should people consider? when they're looking at a home rental in Panama? What are the biggest things that, that jump into your head, like noise things or you know, water issues, stuff like that? I would say the climate, firstly. A lot of people um, would want, that's the first and foremost, someone cooler areas, someone warmer areas. And then you look at a busy area. Do you want close to the road? Do you want something in a quieter area? The noise factor being, um, are there noisy dogs around, chickens, um, and the distance in terms of transport, are you looking for something closer to town, walking distance, are you willing to purchase your own vehicle, um, will you use a taxi service, um, those are probably the big um, questions you ask in terms of location um, with the rental. What about people with pets, how successful are you finding, how, how difficult is it? for someone to get a rental with pets in Panama? It can be a challenge, but we do put that out in front. So anyone that asks me what um, rental is pet friendly, we do have and we do offer that. Um, so yes, you do get pet friendly rentals. What is the percentage of rentals that are furnished as opposed to unfurnished in 
Let's start with the Cherokee region, of course. For sure. So I would say 98% furnished. There's very little that are unfurnished. Um, if they're unfurnished, most of the time, they will still have appliances in it. So you would just need to furnish it in terms of your sofas and bedding, um, obviously your cutlery and crockery, et cetera. What are the main differences between a Panamanian style home and a North American style home besides the price? It would definitely be um, features such as having perhaps a water, um, extra water tank, um, mesh on the windows, the higher ceilings, the natural light. Um, that would probably be also the area you'd find the Panamanian homes might be closer together where the American style, your neighbor's not as close to you. Those like are probably the, the points I'd take. Hmm? Like the kitchen is one example, like the Latino oh. style or Panamanian style, the kitchen is a lot smaller and the living room is, is the most important area. <laughs> That's yeah. true, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually yeah. right, yeah. And when people are shopping online for stuff, the one, one of the biggest things I found in Panama, I've always lived in Panamanian style homes and neighborhoods all my life. They use the word laundry. Well, that means it has a washing <laughs> machine and a clothesline to hang your clothes on. It does not necessarily mean it has a dryer. It typically won't have a dryer. Yeah, well, the wash machine's outside. Right and the wash machine's outside in the rain. So... <laughs> That is yes. one. in a North American style home. So if you're, you know, if you're look, you're having it, Samantha, you know, look for you. If, if those things really bother you, I have to have a stacking washer and dryer inside. I have to have a dishwasher. I have to have a um, um, hot water in my bathroom and kitchen sink. That sounds silly in the U.S. And how about here? You need to ask that. Here. Red X. Well, I am going to mute one more time. Yeah, what? The red can... X right here. Mm -hmm. If you guys can keep your lines unmuted and make an Oscar, you guys can, un... uh, sorry, keep your lines muted, please. Okay. So, okay, to invite the person on the space. Too. Okay. You guys know, Megan, can you search around for that, please? Thank you. Um, What's typically the setup for utilities in rentals? Or is there a typical, and if not, what are the different examples? Did you do this for what? Red. You want me to write? Okay, now. Okay. So in terms of utilities, it all depends on what the owner decides. That I would put on the advert. So you see that up front, you already know what you're going to expect. So let's look at an example. If a rental 650, I would say, Rental 650, utilities would include, um, normally in general, the HOA fees, the water and the garbage is at the owner's cost. The internet, electricity, um, the propane, which are used for the hot water and oven, and the garden service are not always included. If it is all included, it does say on the advert, all inclusive. So we already put it out there. It's up front. You can view it. Um, one other thing, Rod, I wanted to mention that we stand out to any other real estate agent in Panama is that our website is updated regularly. So when you go onto our website, those are the current renters available. A lot of the, well, actually, we're the only company that does it. The rest of the other companies have old listings from a year ago, six months ago to five years ago. So that's also something to mention when you are looking, know that it is current and um, our rentals are always updated. Perfect. Um, what is the legality? That's the wrong word. What does a lease entail? I see so many things on Facebook. People say, Oh, this guy's asking for first, last, and three months up front. What, what is the procedure in Panama to lease a, like on a six month, one year lease? Okay. So, firstly, you would just need a copy of your passport. You would then get an agreement set up. Once that's set up and the owners viewed it and approved it, I would then send it to the tenant. You would look through it, and basically, the deposits would, my deposits 100% of the time is the, first month's rent and a security deposit, which is equivalent to the first month's rent. Sometimes the owners will ask pet deposits, but those pet deposits are refundable. So if there's anyone charging you over and above that, um, just question it and check. You know, there are um, exceptions to that rule, depending on some 
very few asked last month. The reason why they would is probably because they've rented before to someone that um, unfortunately did not keep to their one year agreement and left sooner. So for their safety, they would ask you for the last month rent. But that is definitely the yeah. exception to the rule. Okay. Those are my questions. Now we're going to get into actually looking at some rentals that are available right now. And we're going to, uh, I'm going to share my screen and um, we will, you know, yeah, I'm going to share my screen and um, Samantha, you will talk about them. And just like I want to mention after this call, Sam works for a company called Inside Panama. After this call, I'll be giving you all her contact information. Contact information for Martha in um, Coronado Beaches, Panama City for rentals. Can you understand and any contact this? information for, um, I don't know why the mute's not muting. Oh, yeah. Uh, and for Michael, the owner of Inside Panama. How do we switch? Because you're better on this side. Hey, guys. Um, the person that keeps on muting themselves, I'm sorry, we're going to have to uh, force you out um, if it happens again. You can feel free to log back in because there's obviously something wrong with the system because I mute you and then it unmutes. So um, for you guys to um, unmute, to mute yourself, hover over your screen and you'll see down at the bottom left, you'll see a, a little microphone and that will mute you. But right now you're all muted. So please don't touch that and unmute yourself. Okay, now. I'm going to share my screen. Just give me a second here. I'm going to share the right screen. Uh, it should be this one. There. Okay. Is that the screen? Can you guys see the house on the screen? Yes, you can. Yes, yes, we can. Alrighty. <laughs> this is yep. one of my favorite places. <laughs> um, I used to drive by, by it every day for five years. Now, if you move here, you can be next door and almost next door neighbors to Oscar and Megan. You can go over to their house every day, use their barbecue, use their dryer. Have a happy party hour. Party on their deck. I'm coming. To people. <laughs> so tell us about this one, Sam. All right, so one thing also I must say to you, the owner of these rentals only use Inside Panama. Um, he doesn't use any other agent. So we have a great relationship with him. Yeah, this, in is, terms about, of this, this is about 10 units, right? Eight or 10? And there's about, well, he's got quite a few. I'd say about 12. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and he's got more at the back. Um, two apartments is just refurbished. So these rentals are very much, and I'm going to use the word entry level, because they are very basic. Um, they're very neat. They are for $450. This includes your water, your garbage, and your um, garden service, and your internet. It excludes your electricity and your propane. The electricity, people ask me a lot, the pricing, it is around... On this particular one, you don't pay more than, I would say, $25. These don't have air conditioning. Because they're in Alto Boquete, it is a lot cooler, and you will definitely not require the air conditioning there. I'm sure Oscar and Megan can confirm yeah. that. Yeah. Especially <laughs> um, in this area. Yes, it has a beautiful little terrace, as you see there. Oh, okay. God. Oh, there we go. The terrace, um, it, it comes fully furnished, including the linen. It is a six month to one year rental. And um, yes, that's basically the um, information on that rental. Yeah. And also uh, the other thing is it doesn't come with a, it's got a stove, uh, stove top. It doesn't have an oven and a small size refrigerator. So but I, have, I must say that uh, since we're neighbors in that area, like this is one of the examples that it might seem quite uh, simple, but is it's actually a, a very good option and the price mm -hmm. is very fair in my in my opinion mm -hmm. that I've been here for almost 12 years. And um, I, mm -hmm. I also saw some questions. I just wanted to mention that those are right close to the main road where you can catch the bus. Yeah. Um, garden service means that someone is mowing your lawn. Yep. And there was also a question about the tin roof, but you can see from the pictures inside the home that it's insulated. So 
it's not really loud when it rains. But yeah. you also see, if you move into an A-frame, that's something I miss. Oscar and Megan are now in an A-frame. You don't hear the rain. Like even a heavy rain, like the heavy rain, you hear it, hear it a bit. If you got a flat, yeah, you roof, hear it, but it's not like it's not like you yeah. like if you have a like tin roof, then you really hear the rain. Mm -hmm. And most Panamanian construction is going to have metal roofs. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Where is this? Con so this one is up Volcancito, a very popular area of Boquete, and that's a ground floor unit. It goes for $850. This includes the HOA fees. Something to note, um, you should never, ever pay HOA fees um, in Panama. That is for the owner. It includes the garden service and water. It excludes electricity, internet, and the propane. This is a lot more spacious and modern. It's got high ceilings, larger windows for natural light, um, hot water throughout. The one thing I forgot to mention to the previous one is that that is a shared laundry. This one has its own private laundry area, um, a separate room just outside the unit. You can see it's tastefully furnished, which means it's fully furnished. It's got all the um, bedding. It has um, all the cutlery and crockery. Um, so the, yeah, this is a, this is normally a typical type of rental. We're looking at that price range for around. It differs between I'd say seven hundred and fifty to nine hundred. You'd probably look at something like this. It's also got a dishwasher and a full size stove oven. Yeah. Here we go. It's got the place is called Valley of the Flowers. Great looking. Yes, it's cool. You just walk out to the a hundred meters to the road and grab a taxi for a dollar to town or less. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so this is a really lovely oh, um, full house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's that's a full house. That rental goes for nine hundred dollars. It is all inclusive. The owner has two um two how would I say casitas, two houses on the property. This one in particular is a two bedroom, one bathroom. It also includes, it's fully furnished. Um, the only thing it excludes is the propane. And the reason why it excludes that is when the owner's away, he cannot facilitate the delivery of propane to you. So you would just need to pay that on your own. Other than that. $5.35, folks, for a 30 tank. Um, it's got great views. It's right up Vulcan Cedar. It's our working kilometers. It's six kilometers up. I'm not sure what that is in miles. Sorry. Um, I think it's about, I don't know how he times it, but Three it'll take four. you. I don't know, yeah, probably. Um, and yeah, it's got a beautiful garden space. It has um, electric gates. So yeah, it's a lovely rental. It's higher up, so it's a lot cooler. So, so uh, the, the question I I'll answer all the time, people say there's something can you find that, Megan? Any chance? Because I, I don't know the people out. Um, is there any chance that uh, um, I can find something in my budget? The budget in Boquete area is about four fifty to five thousand. So this is really something for everyone's budget. You can where there's luxury rentals to see for several thousand dollars a month available up on the mountains in the gated communities. And you know, pay our, uh, you know, five hundred dollars. So there is something for everyone. And Sam looks after the majority of the province. And I'm not going to sit here and try to spell out her email or give her phone number. You all registered for this Q and A. When it ends, you're all going to get an email, which includes your free relocation book um, produced by um, Inside Panama and proofed by myself. Right, Mike? And um, you're going to receive everyone's contact information, so you will have it. Um, so we're going to move a little bit to the beaches quickly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, Sam. Feel free to interject here, though. On, on the beaches side in Panama City, Martha, co-owner of Inside Panama, um, also owns Inside Panama Property Management. And so I kind of give you an idea of what a rental would cost. Okay, I'm missing some information. Oh, here we go. Now this is Coronado Bay. 
You've all heard, I'm sure most of you, this is a high-end rental, okay? Yeah, you can get cheaper, but this is really nice and I wanted to show it to you. You step out of the front of the building, you're on the beach. This is, I think the 19th floor, two bedroom, two bath, and it rents for $1,600. And um, I don't know what you know about the rentals in Coronado, Samantha, but feel free to interject at any time. Looks they like. very um so they're more mostly condo style rentals. Um, these rentals obviously um differ in terms of the quality of the furnishes and finishes I see in um they're very conformed to certain style. Um, where Burkette, you get a more of a variety from a Panamania style to a condo to a duplex to a house um to a casita um. I don't know too much on those rentals myself, but I know that most of them would probably include, be closer to the beach, include having a swimming pool. Um, the HOA fees would be included. I'm not really sure in terms of what it's included and excluded in Martha's rentals, but saying that on our website, all the information on any rental in any area is easily available. Inside Panama Real Estate, click on the rentals button. You'll see where I got all these pictures from. And we're going to look at one more right next to Coronado in New Gargona, which is way over here. These are the buildings, right, Oscar and Megan in New Gargona? Yes. Okay. You can get now one bedroom, one and a half bath, which is great because it has a full ensuite in the main bedroom. And then it has a half bath for guests and for daily use outside for $1,000 a month, which is really a great price. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is on the 14th floor, like really nice finishes. And, you know, as you see, um, great views, ocean front views. There we go. That's New Gorgona. There we go. So that's, that's a really ugly views, by the way. I don't like it. Horrible, isn't it? Oh, wow. <laughs> ah. So that's. Nami. I don't want, I don't see myself sipping a cup of coffee in that. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> One thing, um, sorry, Rod, I wanted to mention, someone mentioned all the, um, what happens with mattresses? Do they get replaced? And the simple thing, yeah, in Panama is that you do every rental norm, well, has a um, mattress protector. So no, you do not get new mattresses every time you <laughs> um, rent, but you, they are, all covered in mattress protectors and the mattresses of good quality. Um, but if you choose to buy your own, that's a choice you can make and depends owner per owner if they will allow you to remove their existing mattress and be replaced with your mattress. Yeah, or you can buy one of those big foam toppers or something so you're not touching the mattress. It's mm -hmm. always a good thing to do. Um, I'm one of the 2%. I've rented unfurnished for the last few years. And, uh, but like, but like Sam said, they're not easy to find. Uh, but um, one of the things, what was, it just slipped my mind. But anyways, so Samantha, uh, Martha are the rentals experts in Panama. And Michael, I just want you to say hello to everyone. 60 second stops. I'll cut you off if you talk any longer. Just <laughs> talk about inside Panama real estate rentals. How long you've been in business? Do you actually know what you're doing? Which we wouldn't. <laughs> Be aligned with you if you didn't. So, so say hi to everyone, Michael. His contact, personal contact information for those of you looking at the real estate side in Panama will be in that email tonight. Feel free to fire him all the questions you want. Well, thanks, Rod. Thanks for having me. Hello, for, hello, everybody. I uh, sure look forward to meeting you all here in Panama. Um, Inside Panama was launched in 2010. Um, I started off with my first office in Coronado. We now uh, service five different locations across the country. Um, rentals, we have lots of beach rentals in Coronado. Sam does a fantastic job up in Boquete with the rentals up there in Cherokee. Um, and we also have rentals in Panama City. Most of the demand is, to be honest, is at, at the beach and in, in Boquete. Um, we also, of course, sell all sorts of property, land, houses, um, commercial buildings, hotels, um, businesses. So uh, we're a full service real estate company and 
we sure look forward to uh, meeting you all. Perfect. All right. Now, Oscar and I, when we started this business, that was one thing, the number one thing, once you get your visa is, where am I going to live? And we, and we, had, we looked around at all these real estate companies and we found one, luckily, that had both rentals and sales. Because when you get here, the chances are you're not going to buy in the week that you arrive. It happens, but chances are you're not. And, and we, we're still going to say this. Mike's on the call, and, I'm, and, and he knows, and he's aligned with us. Oscar and I are going to tell you guys this. Rent for six months. Rent for a few months. Get a short-term rental, and then go out and start looking. Make sure you like the area before you pull a trigger like that. Very, very easy to buy. Might not be that easy to sell. So that's our advice. But we're going to open up the Q&A now. Now, Oscar, Megan, do you got anything to add to the rent those questions or anything you want Samantha to um, uh, talk about on rentals or any questions for her? Oh, brother, yeah, I think you got everything covered up. And it was extremely informative from Samantha. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So we're going to open up the Q&A. If anyone wants to unmute and ask a question, you can. As I'm scanning through the... Um, messages to there's a lot of messages in the chat we have peaked out <coughs> at 100 people <coughs> so we're going to have some unhappy customers that aren't getting on the call because we're maxed out but they should have dialed in early that's what i say <laughs> i'm sorry guys we like to keep it. It, it it's like our tours we won't take any more than 12 we could easily take more than 12 but we need to be able to manage everyone in the time that we have. We have an hour and a half today. If there was 400 people on this call, everyone wouldn't get that um, asked a question and wouldn't get an answer. So that's why we keep it to 100. There's gonna be a recording of this call to go out to everyone tomorrow. So the people that did not get on it can watch the recording and email their questions in. So anyone wanna ask a question? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, this is Stephen. Hey, uh, I got a question. Uh, I read somewhere where you have to uh, pay off your mortgage by 72. Is that correct? Uh, 75. 75. So, uh, right, right. So uh, that, that sounds good. I mean, I'm younger than that. <laughs> it's not easy to get a mortgage for a foreigner. It, it is possible. The procedure is going to take you several months, maybe six even. Or eight, and you're going to pay about what's the going rate, Michael? Seven, six and a half, seven? Yeah, I'll put it in there. Yeah, you're going to be paying six and a half, seven percent with the bank. So if you borrow, bear, borrow small and pay large uh, up front. Huh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Very good. good down payment. And there's also developer options and owner financing options that can be cheaper than that. Uh, if you got the right guy to guide you through it, like we have up in the corner here. Uh, yeah. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. What is the um, shortest term for a lease that one can get? You know, we are, we're thinking, oh, maybe we'll go and stay for three months. Is it possible to get a three-month lease somewhere versus just an on, Airbnb? Yeah, it all depends on yeah, Airbnb. But Samantha, do you sign many three-month leases? We do on occasion have that um, available. Mostly the clients don't like a huge turnover. Well, I'm speaking in Bukete. They don't like a huge turnover of their rentals. And right now it's in such high demand that they prefer doing six months to one year. Sure. On occasion, like today, I did a four-month rental. The owner's going to Canada. He's quite happy to have someone in his home for four months. So, yes, um, you do get those um, shorter-term rentals. Okay, and they would be listed as short term available on your site, perhaps, or would we just have to kind of check and see, you know, individually if we liked something and just see if we could do it for less than six months? For sure, you can contact me and um, we can chat on that and see what's available um, to meet okay. your requirements. The, okay. I, will, I will highly suggest if you're looking for a three month rental, depends on the time of the year, if you're looking for those three months, between November and February, you do want to go ahead do it at least six months prior to that. Because a lot of these snowbirds come here and everything is booked. So yeah, just that, do it. Yeah, that's exactly 
<laughs> we would want to get out of the winter like January, February, March course, when everyone else is coming as well. So, yeah. so you're saying if we want to do that, make sure we look way ahead of time. Oh yeah, at least six months. At least, yeah, yeah. to yeah. see if there's something. Sure. Uh -huh. Okay. If you're looking at the beaches, like the Coronado. Yeah, uh, that's what we were thinking, Coronado area. Then, then I'll be sending you Martha's contact information. Send her yeah. an email. There's lots available in in the yes. shorter months there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. She, she has top by the week if you want. So, <laughs> but like Oscar said, get it booked now because yes, we if you're we, coming these the next in November. You gotta do it now at the latest. Yeah, we did not have a season because of COVID last year. Everyone's gonna be coming next year. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Good. Hey, I have a question if I could. Um, yes, we have very specific interest in Valle Escondido, and I noticed, Oscar, you have some history there. Yes, uh, but uh, we just literally returned with our pensionado visas in hand, so we're very actively now looking for a rental to purchase. Is there an opportunity to get a six month to a year rental and then the option to purchase? And we're very, um, again, we had a chance to go through various units in Valle Escondido, and we were very interested in their uh, villas. Uh, there are three or four story villas, as an example. Anything available uh, in that uh, area? Mike or Sam uh, for rent? I mean, I know there is options. In it comes and goes, but Sam or Mike will. Yeah, go ahead and take the rental part, Sam. So rentals in Valle Escondido are very hard to find. Most of the people I find that live there are the owners and they don't really rent out. If they rent out, they do it privately or they're living there and they choose not to rent out. Most are for sale. So to find... A rental there um, is not very easy. That's my definitely my opinion. Okay, we would be willing to rent in the area, like a pensionat. There's another community. I can't remember the name. Uh, as long as the, we're close enough to be able to rush over to purchase something, because we want to buy, but we keep listening to the advice to rent first. So if we were near Valle Escondido, that would be acceptable, as long as we were prioritizing, you know, purchasing something there as well. Yeah, Bogete is small enough to stay. I mean, I live um, close to the checkpoint and it takes me, I drive like a South African, so it takes me <laughs> about eight minutes into Bogete. Um, but yeah, so, you know, you are very close by. It's Bogete is, you know, you can, there's so many lovely areas that you can live in for sure, close enough. Now, Philip, I will have to say it in my, what I have seen it, uh, my experience living in Bukete, especially by Escondido. If you, let's say you rent out something is known by Escondido, most likely there's a chance then within a month or prior that, before that, somebody decided, oops, I want to sell this home. I want to sell this villa. It happens like that. Sometimes there is continually. So be open to that, that, is, that it will be an option too. Very common, happens very often. Mm -hmm. If we now, if that, you're looking for a villa six specific, six uh, months you rental, have boots on the ground, you'll find it. I'm sorry. Here's my question. If we had a six month rental, for example, as you suggest, and then something came available, we purchased it two months later, could we sublet the balance of the four months and absorb the loss or will we have to absorb the four month loss? You couldn't sublet. Most clients would put on your rental agreement, no subletting. Um, you would either forfeit your, um, it depends, you know, it's, it's, uh, if they are aware that you are looking to buy and you have that clause in place, always be upfront and people are more open to putting a clause saying, all right, we're quite happy. If you notify us and give us 60 days, you will get your deposit back. But if you just suddenly approach them without being open and um, say to them, you are leaving within four months of your six months, you will lose your deposit. So I think pay it by yeah, and just be open with them. Say, I am renting for six months. However, during that time, if I find something, I want to put it in clause in place that I will give you 30 or 60 days notice. And a lot of them are fine with it and they hand back your deposit because rentals at the moment are in high demand in Brookhete. So they know they will replace you, um, your rental with someone else. Thank you very much. Okay. Hey guys, I want to get into the meat of these hundred questions we have from these hundred people. Um, and we're going to go, I'm just going to read them and pass them off to us, Megan, or if it's quickly something in my specialty, I will answer it. So um, the gentleman's asking, I've obtained my retirement visa, my retirement pension letter 
social security letter, which I emailed to the Panama consulate. They uh, must be in, in, in the US. They emailed back saying it must be notarized. Yes, your retirement letter must be first notarized by the Department of State. And then it goes to the Panama consulate. Your lawyer should be advising you through that step. So we're not, Oscar and I never get legal advice. Our first question is, uh, what did the lawyer tell you to do? The, but the lawyer I've read, and why I, only reason why I know this, because I've asked our lawyer who we've used for 10 years to give me the steps. And the steps are simple. It goes, it gets notarized by your state department. Then it goes to the um, um, uh, Panama consulate or the apostle. Okay. Are there long-term rental properties that will set the both cat and dog I've had, a, I've had a cat and a dog or multiple dogs the entire time I've been in Panama and I've rented almost eight places here. So that answer is yes. If, if anyone, you know, uh, I get a lot of questions. I want information about more rentals. Yes, send, um, you, you will get at 8.30, you will get <coughs> um, Sam's contact information. Send her email what you are looking for. Be specific. Give her two to three days to get back to you. She is swamped. The rentals market is hot. And if she has to look through her website and pull links down of exactly what you're looking for, please give her two to three days to get back to you. Thank you. Is Panama safe to live with only 25% of the population receiving the vaccine? Panama's rollout in the vaccine in the next three to four months is going to be pretty high um, with 5 million dosages of Pfizer arriving by the end of the month. Um, I understand there's five gated communities. Can you tell me which ones? Gated communities. Oscar, can you list the gated communities in Bolquete and which one is best for a single person in their 60s? I would like to live in a community with organized social hikes, walks, potlucks, et cetera. Well, there is uh, the amount of communities we have, uh, Panamonte States, we have Boquete Country Club, we have Lucero, we have Boquete Canyon Village, we have uh, Valle Escondido. Los now, Molinos. In Los Molinos. Now, for someone uh, with that profile, I will say to you, if you want to be more close into the amenities of the town, the best option will be by Escondido. It can be very social and also plenty space to go for walks, very safe, 24-7 uh, security run as well. And you have a restaurant, you have a bar, you have a spa. So if you want to be more independent, more outside, there is be other options. Lucero, if you, let's say you like to play golf, Lucero has an option for a full golf course. Mike okay. loves to play there when he goes, right? But yes, the, the places with the most residents would be Valle Escondido and Los Molinos. And Los Molinos, But yeah. no matter where you live, it's very easy to get involved with the community. It's very, I, I can't hear you. Very what? It's very easy to get involved in the community in Boquete, no matter where you live. Yes. Okay. Can I ask you something or is that? Okay. Well, um, cause I'm the one who wrote the question. <laughs> um, so, um, to me, there's a big, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Oh, to me, there's a difference between like, just saying, you know, um, go to the market and say hi to people and introduce yourself. I mean, it's a lot easier. It would, you know, for a lot of people like myself, if there really are just organized activities. So, you know, you, you just join the organized activity. So that's, I was wondering, it, does something like that like that exist? Cause like- sure, But there are more community groups. They're not gated community groups. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. So you would join, you would, there's multiple different hiking groups depending on your level of hiking. Um, there's a bunch of different volunteer organizations um, people that like to go out and eat together with different interests, a photography group. There are plenty of different Birding things. group or a hiking group. There are some groups that are just focused on birding. There are some groups who just focus on just hiking. There's groups just focus on flowers and, and trees. There's all kinds of groups. So. And people really are that friendly here. Yes. But um, the easiest way to find out if you have a specific interest would be to just write in one of the Boquete Facebook groups, and you'll get a bunch of responses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have trivia night. We have uh, 
Okay. Then a bingo night. Uh, is, bingo. <laughs> no, but we, we have when I think of bingo, I think of old people. I kind of like to dance, you know, and do things that I, yeah. you know, I haven't become is, old <laughs> yet. Oh, yeah. Radio. It is all the options. They're not always inside the gates of the community. They're more in the community as a whole. Well, yeah. I, I, there, yeah, I guess the reason I was thinking of a gated community was if I were going there myself, yeah. you know, and I didn't know anyone, it would be easier to like initially meet people if there were already some organ or you know things going on. But it's also we have some friends that do there every week a newcomers meeting. And, oh really? Oh, oh. oh yeah. And oh, then nice. in newcomers, you get to meet different people for different backgrounds, and you just you can choose how you feel more comfortable. And that's, you could just go with the flow. Oh, yeah, and there's nice. Newcomer's Night in yeah. Coronado, too. Also in Coronado, yes. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. It's pretty All awesome. Right. Well, thank you very much, Elaine. Um, Valerie, <laughs> you really live in Panama without speaking the language. Well, nine and a half years, Valerie. I, <laughs> I am not um, fluent in Spanish. I know several thousand words that I've learned, so I can point to a picture on my phone and politely ask the clerk in a, in a hardware store where to find this screwdriver. Uh, so yeah, you, you can live in Panama without being fluent in uh, Spanish, but constantly learn if you can. I'm trying, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, that's the only reason why I'm checking my phone. Sometimes Oscar and Megan are trying to tr tell me something that, you know, my hair is out of place or something. So <laughs> and, um, I'm going to answer this from Marianne. Does the rental owner charge a higher price for rental if they work, if they work through a rentals agent? Um, I, I don't have any experience of that, Marianne. If it did, if they up their price by 50 bucks, just the stress of it alone, the first time you rent is worth going through a rental agent. It, like, you know, people just want to rent their stuff and their, their, their agreement, they, they, they have to be competitive in the marketplace or it just won't rent. So it, they're not overpriced. Okay, interested in learning the availability of basic medications, also medical facilities accessible from the Highlands Poquete. Oscar and Megan, let's talk about medical facilities and buying your drugs. I mean, prescriptions. Um, did you say something about the islands or is that just generally anywhere? Oh, no, the, the, um, it, it, are the medical facilities accessible from the highlands, Cherokee? Oh, okay. Islands. Um, yeah, so I mean, in Boquete, we have what, like seven, eight pharmacies now? I'm not even exaggerating. Um, and so you can get pretty much any medication here and a lot of it you can get without um, a prescription. prescription. I could only think of it in Spanish. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, and there are great clinics here in Boquete, anything major, we have two major hospitals in David. Um, anywhere else in the country, a lot of people opt to go to Panama City for the major hospitals, um, but we have, fantastic facilities here in Panama. Honestly, most of the doctors and dentist visits I've had in Panama, I felt were some of the best doctor's visits I've ever had, personally. Especially the dentist, we got a one. Like... And so affordable. Perfect, okay. Uh... Hey, Rod, it's Gary. Hey, Gary, Cyprian, how are you? The Panamundis told me to get on tonight for a free wine. And I'm looking at coming. Oh, that was a personal message. <laughs> Gary and Kate are on the call somewhere, guys. So say hi to them. I know I did answer them in the chat. Okay. Thanks for joining. I know we've got Tom and Susan. Yeah. We've got a lot of friends on tonight. Uh, I think Oscar addressed the snowbirding in Boquete. If you're looking at staying here from January through May, start looking now. Um, I don't yeah, know especially what's from predict yeah. what's going to happen next year, but I'm thinking it's going to be pretty busy in Panama. Okay. Yes, there's the best suggestion and advice if you're coming, if you're looking to come between December and February of March, definitely book now. If you're coming, if you're thinking to come between March, 
May, June, then you have time. But those dates between December and March are very precious here in Panama. So a lot of these numbers will come here. Now that Canada is opening more uh, to be accessed in and out the country, we expect there's gonna be full 100% capacity all the Canadians that didn't, were, they didn't, were able to come to Panama this past uh, high season will come this one. Perfect, um, George. Yeah, so if you're in a six month lease or a year lease and it ends, and then it, it'll go to a month to month type type rental lease. Okay, oh, we're, we're still way back here. Um, George is coming with us in October, yay. You didn't realize that. Great. <laughs> Everything we saw in the rentals is fully furnished for those prices. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is one of my favorites. How do expats receive mail in Bolcate? We don't. It's great. No junk mail. No. Nope. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to go. It, it, you know, people go, oh my God. Actually, Megan and Oscar, have you looked at what was announced last week, what they're trying to do? with street signs, house numbers, and mail delivery in Boquete? No. Yeah, it's coming, but they want way too much money, so no one's going to do it. But anyways, um, you know, I think once they get bigger, they, they can provide it more affordably. So what you typically do is you use a third-party service to get your mail. Now, I'm going to mention the company Mailbox, et cetera. Number one, I've used it for nine and a half years, and I like them. Number two, it's a name everyone already knows because they, they're all throughout they're all throughout the world. So you arrive in Boquete, you can even do this before through email. You go to a mailbox and you sign up for a box and they give you a, a, a Miami address. So you change your mailing address with your bank so you still get your cards, your replacement cards. Change, if you want to change your mailing address for your social security checks or whatever you want to do. And, then you, and they'll also give you a shipping address for packages. So you can put that into your Amazon account or your eBay account. And then any mail sent to that address in Miami gets forwarded to Boquete. It costs a dollar to receive a letter, costs $5 a pound to receive a package. So don't, you know, you're not going to be ordering laundry detergent. You can buy that here. But if you, if ladies, if you're ordering makeup or guys, if you're ordering your special razor blades that only come from one company like mine, uh, you know, that stuff is fine. And then when it arrives, you get an app and they notify you, hey, your package arrived in Boquete, you drive into town and you pick it up. There are no addresses on the homes and there are no street signs. Uh, besides on Main Street, there might be one or two signs. Um, you'll find that throughout Panama. Um, so if you're looking to get food delivery, that's only started happening since the pandemic here, really. Did we, guys, did we really have food delivery uh, three years ago? Nothing, basically. Now everyone delivers because of the pandemic. And now people you have WhatsApp and GPSs that you can share your location so the guy can actually find you. It doesn't always work though. I live on, I have a corner house. So whenever I share my location for food delivery, the guy's trying to, has to go to four houses to find it. But it, you know, it's close. Yeah, you need to tell them is that the house with the, with the pine next to the, the, the yellow wall, on the what is it, broken car? That's the concrete out front, yeah. So that's mail delivery in Panama. We have delivery services within the country. If I want to send something to um, Panama City, it's, you use a freight company. And if it's a business, that can go right to their door. They, they, they find it. You can ship. We have an international mail service that you can ship stuff from here. You go. We have post offices. You can go to the post office, ship a package back to the States, ship a letter. It'll get there in six weeks to 12 months. So, and people can technically mail you here. I've never used that service. It'll take about a month from the US international stamp, your name, general delivery, Boquete, and the postal code. And, but you have to go check to see if it's there. They won't call you. There's no notification. So, yeah. Do you anticipate any changes to the mask mandate? Also, government. Uh, talking about vaccine, Panama government is not talking about past uh, vaccine passports. 
uh, mask mandates. I, I think, you know, when more vaccines get out, numbers go down, they'll stop them in, in public and then slowly roll them out in indoors. So what, what are your thoughts on that, Oscar? Well, I just saw some news today and the Association of Restaurants and Hotels in Panama, they're trying to in, suggest then uh, only people with full vaccinated cars will be able to join uh, discos, bars, and restaurants. But that's just something that came out. I don't know if that will be possible, if that will happen, but that was something, it's a trending right now in the news today that I saw. Yeah, I think the government, our government here has made the statement, the president himself, not going to mandate vaccines for entry into the country. So, but if you do have a vaccine, you won't have to get tested. So, but um, that's going to happen soon. There, there, there's more talk about them working on a system to um, get that into place. What businesses are going to do, I think in every country, is going to be different. There's already crews yeah. in, in Europe doing vaccinated cruise lines. And there's yeah. also concerts in the U.S. doing vaccinated concerts with 10, 20,000 people. So I, I don't know. I can't answer. We're not going to give opinions on this call. Um, everyone has the right to their own opinion. But just for as far as coming here, you're safe whether you're vaccinated or not coming here in the future. But in the, definitely in the next six months, you're probably going to need a COVID test whether you're vaccinated or not. Yep. Okay, do you know if we arrive with our dog, can we relocate in the 40-day quarantine? The 40-day quarantine for your animal means you need to keep them indoors. It doesn't matter. You can move him just keep, because he's in the car. So, and no one checks on you anyway. So, so there's no problem. Um, see, we, we import dogs as one of our services. So we help people. We help people with the paperwork and we can even do the transport. So they, they come off the plane, you got to get them into a vehicle, into a hotel room. And then if you take them out, you got to take them out on a leash, not around any other dog. That's what quarantine is. And then when you get to your final destination, he's supposed to stay on your property. Now that doesn't mean he has to stay in your house and poop all over your floor. It means he has to stay on your property and not mix with other animals. I could ask you a question on that, on the dog and cats and such. Uh -huh. Very simply, uh, I think we've already communicated before that we've already accepted the reality that we're going to likely have to pry private. Uh, I don't think logistically we're going to be able to share the planes with someone. So we're making arrangements now to get uh, to fly private. Uh, but when we're uh, curious, we would love to get involved with your service. Uh, we'd like to make certain, though, that what we want to understand if we fly private, can we take all the animals with us on that plane and our personal belongings and such? And if so, how can we make arrangements so that we stay with the animals here and there? And can we fly directly to David to get to Boquete or do we yeah. have to go to Panama? Those yeah. are the you and I need to have a conversation, Philip. Yes. So yes. Uh, give me a call tomorrow. Done. I will. Thank you. Like, like, like you have my number on, on, on my emails and stuff like yes. that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Call because we I, I'm doing this um, twice right now, um, twice this month. Um, okay. Yeah, helping people doing the same thing you're you're doing for sure. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things to consider. So, yeah. Hey, Ron. Hey. Hey, uh, Stephen again here. Uh, I talked to you last week about uh, insulin supplies, diabetic supplies shipping yeah. in. As far as uh, did you ever get an answer or any idea about uh, traveling with that? I didn't, Stephen. Yeah. I emailed a doctor here, mm -hmm. and that's right. You never got back to me yet. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, with the airlines here, you know, I know how to travel around America with this. But I'm looking at this, and and another question is, um, I'm looking at something. Do I need written prescriptions for my medications if they're in pill bottles in all this stuff? Medications are a zero issue unless you're bringing more than three months of one, one type of medication in Panama. And then typically they're a zero issue. You, you, I, I've had people bring medicine in uh, Ziploc bags. I wouldn't advise that. Okay. Panama's concerned about money and drugs when you come. Oh, to okay, yeah. I, I, they I, understand I, people I, spend I, months at a time yeah. here and have medicines. I would yeah. just 
can they bring the original bottles. You don't need the written descriptions. They can't read them anyways because they're in English. Yeah, it's crazy the information out there. It says that um, I'm supposed to have a uh, letterhead uh, from my doctor that says, you know, I'm diabetic and I'm carrying these supplies. That's 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 crazy. The only thing that my concern was, but the TSA is a TSA. If the TSA allows you to travel with your uh, insulin pumps and needles yeah. on a domestic flight, the TSA is no different internationally than domestic, but I'm still going to get that answer because I was really expecting an answer back from the doctor at the airport, but I didn't get one. Great. Yeah, my main concern was just uh, once I land in Panama, going through customs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, so... Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Customs is really, I, I've landed in customs many times in the U S I dread it. Landing in customs in Panama, never, ever been an issue. And I'm talking like probably 50 to hundred times. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Do, do we need a COVID test to get into Panama right now? Yes, you do. Uh, okay. So that's something we must, uh, originate, uh, in this country we can't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 48 hours before arrival. Okay. They normally accept the 48 hours before departure. The actual law stays before arrival, but I think they forgot about that. <laughs> no. Okay, before arrival. Right, yeah. right, right. Okay, all right. I'll find a source. Thank hey, you. Karen, Karen Cantor is on the call. Hey, Karen. Look at him. There's a really long discussion on that uh, that you and I should discuss about citizenship, pensionado. And Panama not actually allowing dual citizenship. Open my spam. So that's something we should get in first thing. Either way, okay. here or you know, if you want to give me a call on it. So. Okay. Thank you. I'll be text. I'll be emailing you. Yeah. Perfect. We'll be talking a lot in the next month. That's true. Now I have a Canadian question. Canadians who are pension adults pay zero income tax. You pay zero income tax here. But if you're a resident of Panama, there'll be a $2,500, uh, sorry, 25% withholding tax. Unfortunately, like it's really weird. Yeah. Canada has a, uh, doesn't have a tax treaty, but they still want their, their share of taxes. Okay, we're currently staying in New Gorgona, Nueva Gorgona. Do you recommend working on our visa before moving to Panama? Well, who's this? Bruce. You have, you can stay in Panama 180 days. You don't have to start your visa for probably four or five months, right? I'm trying to get help from us when they get. Sorry, what, what was it? <laughs> Sorry. Um, the, the guy was asking about, um, they're in New, New um, Nueva Gorgona now. Do they recommend working on the visa before moving to Panama? I'm just saying that you're allowed to stay in Panama for 180 days. If you don't want to leave, yes. you need to start your visa at about the four-month part. Like, like before the four months is over? Because, all, because your paperwork will expire in six months. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah, uh, we're, we're currently here in Gorgona for a year's lease. We are leaving after the, before the six months for a month and okay. coming back. Um, we plan on moving to the Bouquete area to try that place out for a year. Loved it when we came for vacation, especially the weather compared to the beach area where it's three digits right now. Yeah. Um, but we were just wondering, how is the lawyers in Bruguete and it being so far from the city, should we get our paperwork done while we're closer to the city um, for the immigration offices and everything? It's oh, okay. actually easier to apply at the immigration office in David, which yeah. is 30 minutes from Bruguete. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. It's easier. It, it's one day less. You don't have to go twice. There's no lineups. It's much, uh, the Panama immigration office drives me nuts. So big, yeah, so crowded. And then, and then you have you don't have to deal with that traffic trying to make it to Panama City if you don't know the schedule. That yeah, can be... we we got stuck in traffic for four exactly. hours one time. <laughs> exactly. So you know what I'm talking about. Okay, and do they have lawyers there that you can recommend? Um, yes. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Send us an email. You know our site, guys. Retireinpanamatours.com. 
there's a visa section on there or just the contact section. We'll connect you personally. And, right. yeah. and let me tell you then, our, our, our team, it will just, we'll go beyond that. The customer service is outstanding. So we'll your mind. Very, very well. Okay, yeah, because we plan on going for maybe a week's visit um, in a couple of weeks, first week of August, maybe, um, probably to enjoy the weather, but also look at um, possible rentals for next year and uh, make contacts for like with you guys for visas and everything else. Yeah. Somebody wants to say hi. Say hi. Oh, uh, you know how cute that puppy? No. Yeah. The question, are there high rises in Boquete? Well, you need to get here. Boquete has a population of 5,000 people with a surrounding 10 towns, 25,000. The highest building is three stories high and it's abandoned. Uh, so no, there are no high, there, there's no traffic lights and there's no street signs. Can we, are you using home Wi-Fi? Can you change the password for security purpose and that's safe? I don't know what that means. Okay, let's talk about paying your utility bills. How do you do that, Megan? You've lived there long enough. Um, How do you bill? I do it because on it my good. online banking app. On my phone. You, they would never get paid. Oscar would 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 forget, right? Yeah. So for some reason, people here still go in person and pay their bills. It's just very common. They'll go to each office and pay their bills that way um, to pay their cable, to pay their cell phone bill whatever it is, um, but I pay all of mine right on my bank app on my phone. Yeah. Also, another thing that works in when you're gonna get the service, you can arrange to uh, link your credit card. So in the beginning, when you start the contract, it's already debit from your credit card. Just do, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Donna, Rod, what, what about, Rod? yeah. My question regarding the Wi-Fi had to do with Samantha saying that some homes included, the rent included having Wi-Fi there. So I'm assuming it's already there and you have to have a password. So the owner must know the password. Oh, I understand you're what you're using, saying now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're using their Wi-Fi, they have the password. Yeah. If they have, if you have a shared Wi-Fi system, I'm always a guy to plug in my own somewhere, like bring my own router and plug it into the other router and just you use mine but some places have shared wi-fi which i don't like and you want to run a vpn um changing the wi-fi if, if 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 it's an individual house that has its own internet connection yeah it's a matter of calling up the internet company and having a wi-fi change the, the, the wi-fi password change all right thank you okay what about mail deliveries and other area than boquete Panama has no national mail delivery anywhere. It only has an international services for packages going out and coming in. There is no delivery to people's houses because we have no addresses. Uh, even, even Although there is a mail forwarding service now in the Esquero region um, that people in Pedasi are getting deliveries right to their front door. Yeah, they're actually trying to do that in, in Boquete, but it's not a national thing. The one, the one they want to set up in Boquete uh, gives you an address and a mailbox, community mailbox. You got to pay $500 to set it up, plus $30 a month. And then, but still, nobody from Panama City can mail you anything. And so you can, so, so you can mail a letter to your neighbor. Do people still do that? Hmm. Christmas cards are coming back. It could happen in Panama. Currently, there is not. Well, the one in the Asuero is just like your typical mail forwarding service but they'll actually bring it right to your door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can get a um, mailbox, et cetera, a place like that to deliver to your door if you want it. Like they, they use fleet che Chevelas and, and, and they'll charge you for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's pretty, it's easy just when you're in town, pick it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see changes to the friendly nations being, being adjusted or altered? Things always change in Panama. I, I, like after the deadline for the old friendly nation visa, which is only a couple of weeks away, immigration department is gonna see a drop of about 75% of its revenue. So this is politics folks. You're gonna see some changes. That's just my opinion. But 
Yes, they are doing COVID tests at the airport and arrive, uh, on arrival. I do not recommend it. And I do not recommend it on departure at the airport. It is run by MINSA, our government health care system. If you test positive, you, you alone, not your family, not your luggage, nothing, are taken to a government hotel facility for two weeks. You're, Although it's a nice facility, but you want to control your the outcome. If you want to control your destiny, get tested before you come here. Or at least the next two weeks of your life. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I never tell anyone to use the uh, air, airports. Because it also could be a false negative. And then you ha end up be going there. Yeah, you lose the until they figure That's it out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Least expensive areas to rent. What, what are the least expensive areas to rent in Panama during the high season? Uh, somewhere that nobody goes in the high season? <laughs> Las Tablas? No. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Good. Oh, no. That's a nice. That's kind of all. That's kind of all. Uh, mm -hmm. that's I would say, say more in the countryside. So I would say more like uh, perhaps Las Lajas and Panama Oeste or yeah. no, no, even that. That's pretty easy too. It kind of just goes along with where rentals generally are yes. less expensive. Yes. Yeah. How long? I, would say, I would say just in the high season, everything it gets available everything is just gets a little booked. bit more expensive yeah. if you only want to book during high season mm -hmm. yeah the best deal you're going to get is on a one year lease yes okay i only got a couple more printed uh typed questions then we're going to open the call back up there's still almost 100 people here they haven't left yet so everyone wants to be happy how long does it take between the temp visa and permanent visa typically three to four months the whole process is usually about five months yeah. Uh, uh, Megan, do you have a U.S. bank? Somebody wants to, uh, Marianne wants to send you money, I think. I don't know. I'll write you my account number. Um, <laughs> yes, I have a U.S. bank and I also have a Panamanian bank. So I will, can, it's just very useful. I can move money out of my U.S. bank into my Panamanian bank. Um, I really like having both. Yes. Uh, I think Rod does too. He has multiple bank accounts, Canada, U.S., Panama. Is there a best bank for sending, uh, for trying to send money from the U.S. to Canada? I've checked with several banks. Sorry, U.S. to Panama. Uh, yeah, so moving money here. Um, Rod, do you want to take that one? Sure. Why are trying to check with several banks and they seem to have issues with that sometimes? No, they, I've been moving money here for 10 years. It's a typical wire transfer. You don't need intermediate banks. It's directly from your bank in the U.S. to the Bank of Panama. They, uh, all the banks here have um, what do you, uh, swift numbers. And the process takes about two hours. And the cheapest I know of is multi-bank. They're $21.40 to receive a wire. The most expensive I've seen is... Um, uh, that needs small and they were $60. So it ranges between 20 and 60 to receive a wire of any size. And then plus whatever your fee is at your end for sending wires. But since I, I do it now, every, I, I've done Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Nevada State Bank. So those are the ones that I have experienced. And I just do it online on my computer or on my phone. And you, the, the key any bank though, should be able to do that? Yes, any bank, uh, if, you, if you deal with some obscure non-national credit union or something like that, you may need to use an intermediate bank, which the bank here can provide you and it may take an extra day. But if you deal with any other major national banks in the US, no, it's just uh, uh, type in the bank name, address, account number, the uh, SWIFT code and money, money's gone. The, the, the problem is not with Panama, the problem is with the US. First of all, the majority of you on this call probably don't have access to send international wire transfers as of 2008. Um, you have to go into your bank where they fingerprint you, DNA samples, no, just kidding. Where, where, they, where you gotta show proof of ID, residency, utility bills. You, you have to get permission to send international wire transfers from on, online without having to phone fast, whatever way you 
you just do it in the past. And you got to get that set up before you arrive to Panama. So many people haven't listened to that advice. They arrived here and found out they can't send themselves any money. And they have to fly back to the States to appear before their bank with all this information that, that the bank requires. It's money laundering, uh, government, we want to know where your money is going. If you're sending over $10,000, you need to notify the bank at this end where that money came from and what it's for. That's so that's an issue if you're going to purchase a car or house or something like that. Yeah, it's as simple as if you're going to purchase a car, uh, you, you made the, uh, you, I've had even people just write a letter, email to their manager. Hey, I'm in shopping for a car in a $20,000 range. I'm going to wire myself $25,000. No problem. Send it. Because anything over 10, the, the U.S. has a law on all banks worldwide to control money laundering and stuff. All wires over $10,000 get flagged and they need one more push to go for the system. So that can, can be done at this end if they know what the money's for. We do recommend that you open a bank account in Panama. Uh, pensionados don't have to before they get their residency. But um, like someone asked, are you paying utilities with a Panama bank? Yes. Um, you, would you wouldn't want to have to get cash out every time or go in person to pay oh. in your debit or credit card for your utilities when with your Panama bank account, you can just pay right on online banking. That's right. And don't think your U.S. company is going to pay your international fees forever. <laughs> there are some, well, um, uh, some U.S. banks that pay your international charges when you're traveling. I think that realize that you are a uh, resident, they stop doing that. Because typically, if you look at their TOS, they're, they're going to say, you must be a resident of the U.S., living in the U.S. six months out of the year, and then we will pay all your international transaction fees. So it can cost you ten dollars every take money out of a teller. It can cost you one percent every time you use your credit card here. It can cost you a buck something every time you use a debit card here to buy something. So you want a Panama Bank, just just, and you want to look like you actually live here and get the respect of the Panama people that you're dealing with. Cool. Okay, I think I caught up with the type. That was a marathon, folks. You guys had a lot of questions. So we have about five minutes left on the call. Let's just un open up the lines. Do I get, can I unmute all? Okay, that'll that'll really make a noise. So why don't you guys unmute the line yeah, um, if you want to ask a question? Yeah, I have a question about cell service. So, uh, yeah. is there a, a best cell provider in Boquete? And can I? I have an existing iPhone with Verizon. Can I get them to unlock it and use it there, or do I need to purchase a GSM phone in uh, Panama? Uh, oh yeah. The, the best cell phone service is the one that works best at the house you're going to live in. I lived, I, I've lived in Bocchetti for nine years. I've changed my service three times because just you're farther away from the tower. So you got, and, and all numbers are portable here. So it's really, it's easier to do in the States. You go into one, they give you a letter, you go to the other place, you sign up with them. And within a few hours, your <clears throat> phone's working on, on the other network. How about Valle Escondido? Is there a service that you know of? That well, you're right in that? town. What works best in Valle Escondido, Oscar? You'll know that. Pretty much anyone. Anything. Anything. Because you're right. Mobile, Tigo, uh, Diesel. Tigo the, has uh, the best rate right now, so yeah. I would go with Tigo. I'll go with Tigo. Yeah. Tigo, okay. 30, 32 bucks a month, unlimited um, data, lots of units, um, 200 <laughs> back to the U.S., so it's a good deal. And can I use my existing iPhone if I get it unlocked, or do I have to get a GSM phone there? You, you need no. a GSM phone. You can't use a C, um, CDMA phone here. They don't want. Ah, OK, thank you. What? I don't know what those what that means. Oh, yeah, do you have your uh, unlocked iPhone here? Verizon uses my unlocked a iPhone worked here. Verizon uses a different technology in the US. They use CDMA. They don't use GSM. Their phones don't work here. Unless you have a Verizon GSM phone. I, I, I actually did buy my iPhone with Verizon and unlocked it and it worked fine here, but you guys, I don't know exactly what that means. So GMC, better to be safe than sorry. DLS, all that stuff, I don't know. But yeah, whatever Rod says. Panama only has a GMT. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions, guys? We still have. 85 people here. We lost 15, 16. 
So what other questions is it got? What do you want to know about Panama? We got five minutes left. Where do I get a Here, I got a question about military. Yes. We don't have one. Uh, no, but being a veteran, I just want to know, are your benefits available in uh, Panama? There are benefits available for you. There are VA pharmacies. Uh, do you have TRICARE for Life, Michael? Yes. Yes, then you have their yeah. uh, veterans hospitals in, in, in Panama City and that be that will fully look after you. I, I suggest- Thank you very much. Facebook, I suggest Michael going onto Facebook, uh, search for Veterans Out Outreach Poquete and join that group and you'll meet up with a lot of guys that can help you better than Oscar and myself on that issue. Very useful, by the way. Oh, very good, very there good. There are some liaisons that will help you with that in major areas around the country. Cool, so must you have TRICARE to use the VA uh, pharmacies? Um, you can use the VA, uh, like there's different levels. And here I'm gonna tell you, I'm not an expert, neither is Oscar, uh, but there are different levels of TRICARE and TRICARE for life and uh, stuff like that. Yeah, I, I don't, I, so reach out, that's the group on Facebook. Uh, Veterans Outreach Panama. There are thousands of guys, literally. They will be able to guide you the right way. Thank you. Okay, someone else was going to ask a question there. And there's two asking for one. Okay. Microphone Rod. issue. Go ahead. Rod. Rod, I had a question again on banking. Yeah. Everything that I've read, you need to either apply for a visa or have a visa before they'll allow you to open an, an account. You're absolutely right. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So you're going to live there for two months without any money, right? On your credit well, card. Well, not two months. If, 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 yes. Yeah. Technically. If you don't apply for your visa right away, a lot of people apply for the visa. They start working on the visa process because it's easier to get your fingerprints if you're done in the States. It's easier to get um, certain things if you're still in the state. So they retain a lawyer. All they need is a letter from the lawyer that has your deposit saying that Tom Moody is in the process of immigration. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thanks. It can it can be a little complicated if you plan on landing and doing major purchases. But if you're just coming and renting for a little while, I mean, you just bring a little bit of cash. You have your debit card. You have your credit card. Yeah, I've got I've got a no foreign transaction fee credit card that I I set up strictly for this purpose. Yeah, and you can always borrow money from Oscar on the tour. He's yeah, he's, what's the interest rate? Twelve <laughs> zero. <laughs> No, 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 no. Just in the end of the service, just just hand over a couple of agents. We'll be fine. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. Now that some people have started leaving, we should announce the free trip that we're offering on the two. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> at the end of the call, though, I didn't. I'm going to do this now because uh, the last few minutes, I know Michael already said hi. Michael put together uh, this great ebook. It's 85, 88 pages. I proved to spelling. It, it was pretty good. Um, it's all relocation stuff. And you're going to get that in your email in about two minutes. So Oscar and I always believe we're not the only source of information, but there's a lot of bad information on the internet. You want to get stuff that's from reputable people that's current. There are many people, uh, someone the other day told me, hey, I read this online about this visa. And I went to their source and it was an article from 2008. Okay, well, that's a problem. Make sure you're getting your information from good sources. This ebook book is, it'll fill your head with, oh yeah, I should do that. Yeah, this, yeah, I need to do this. So we wanna thank Michael for letting us give that away tonight. So you're all- I got it already. Oh, it, it just arrived, perfect, okay. Yay. And any of you guys that are interested in what is real estate like in Panama? I always defer my questions to Michael because I'm not the expert there. He is. So shoot him an email. Phone him in the middle of the night. He likes that. You're the master. 
Okay, guys, we're going to be winding down. If we have real time for one more, I got a countdown clock of 60 seconds. We have time for one more message. One more question. Elaine has her hand raised. Okay. Go for it. Um, I, I had a question about the infrastructure. I heard that sometimes there are outages. Um, and I also had a question about whether basically, you know, how different it is from the United States. I heard that sometimes you have water outages or electricity outages. Um, yes, yeah, so depends depends where you are in the country, you have more or less of those. No, I mean, I, I, yeah, I would be like in, a, in Boquete or, you know, yeah. not a, so not a Boquete, rural place. Yeah, so in Boquete, the power outages will happen most likely when it's a big storm or in the windy season. And I'll tell you why, because we live in the tropics. So even though they cut the trees or the branches very often, it, this is wild. The trees grow very fast. So it's very hard to keep up with that. So one little branch that grows a little bit extra and might be on the windy season breaks down, it can knock down a power line. Mm -hmm. So it happens. Uh, but usually power edges doesn't last more than a few minutes. Very weird happens for hours, very weird. It doesn't, it's not that often. Usually it's just like an in and out. With water. Um, you know, sometimes the lights flicker on and off and on and off. You don't know why. Yes. But. <laughs> yeah, with the water, depends on where you are in Bouquet, it can be more or less. But uh, we live in, where we are right now, we barely have, we haven't had one this year. There are no one. No, most of the water outages in Bouquet, they have been solved. You yes. see a lot of people do have backup water tanks. You can do that if you want. If you're in drier areas of the country, like the Esquero Peninsula, yes. you'll definitely want it. And, but in Boquete, it's not really necessary anymore. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure is getting better all the time. Getting better and better and better. We have a new mayor, and this mayor is doing good stuff in the town, I must say. Thank you. My, my answer, Elaine, is it is very different than North America. That's why I'm here. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> why you're thinking that you wouldn't be on this call if you weren't looking for something a little different. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but well, I mean, you know, electricity and water and internet are always nice, you know. Yeah, but if, <laughs> I, if you look at our my, at our blog and our site for five hundred dollars, I still have a backup system. That stuff doesn't even bother me anymore. A backup. Um, and you know, even when I'm watching a movie, the power goes out. I don't go out. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, he brother actually has a very nice backup system that is better than a generator. It lasts him for twenty four hours, bro. Yeah, about twenty four hours. But we never. I I haven't had. We haven't had an outage in ten years that long. Like we've had some twelve hour outages, but that's because most of that happened when they were redoing all the power lines along the highway, and they were yeah. they were they were double laning the highway, and there was major construction. So they told everyone, "Hey, the power is going to be out." for a few hours yeah. ended up being 12. The, the only thing personally I, I'm going to invest in a generator will be for only one thing my refrigerator that's it to keep things cold my food my food if something goes down if it really is a serious damage over 24 hours which is not impossible that will be my main thing that will keep it yeah running. keep it cold mm -hmm. yeah but that's just hey, me. Guys, we want to thank everyone. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Tom and Susan, how, how are you guys? Alrighty, who else? Hey, we're hey, good. We're still living in Kansas, but we're coming to Boquete. Yeah, you can come soon. <laughs> yeah, you need to change the life of Kansas for some Panama life. <laughs> it's happening. We're in the process. There you go. Pretty. Stephen, I'll get back to you. Promise now on the Traveling with insulin needles. Okay, I wrote that down. I'm on top of that. Um, all right, folks. You guys have a good night. Thank you. And thank, thank you so for, much. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Oh, Oscar, we forgot to sell them something. Oh no. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. Well, if you come on our tour, we'll we'll do timeshares. Just kidding. <laughs> no, but seriously, thank you to each one of you. They had the uh, took the time tonight to listen to us, to share with us, and to ask the questions. And we kindly, very humbly, are very super grateful for you guys.
And uh, I hope to see you some of the new people that came tonight and some of our, 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 our new our old people. Boss, is this to you too? Shout out to Familia. Shout out to Familia. Shout out to Greg. Shout out to Larry. All the beautiful people that support us. Love you all. Thank you for being tonight with us. All right. Thank Love you. you. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you.